So we all know that camera gear is super, super important. I mean, I've spent over the past five, six years of my photography journey spending hundreds and hundreds of hours religiously studying what the best camera is, what the best value is, the best lenses. So today I'm going to tell you what the best camera gear is that you should be investing in right now. So for context, I'm shooting on the Sony a7 IV. I have a couple of Sigma, Tamron and Sony lenses, but that's beside the point. The best camera gear or best thing you could be investing in right now. This second is honestly this thing right here. You can have the latest and greatest camera gear and technology, drones, lenses, whatever, but it doesn't matter if you don't have the skills or creativity to properly utilize them. Don't let the fact that you have so-called entry-level gear or maybe just a smartphone to take photos with stop you from going out and taking amazing photos because honestly, you really can get some amazing photos with your phone, with an entry-level camera, with whatever you have. The fact is you should be going out and practicing your skills and creativity rather than focusing on getting the best camera gear. So I recently bought the Sony a6300 for my sister, which a lot of people consider a very entry-level or budget cheap option. So today to show you that you can actually take some great photos with some so-called entry-level or budget gear, I'm actually going to be using the a6300 and my phone, the Samsung S21, to take some photos. And I'm going to prove to you that with pretty much anything, you can take some great photos. So we have my car in the background here. We're going to be using that as a subject. So I'm gonna take a couple of photos with my phone and the a6300. I'm using it with the Sigma 35 F1.4, but obviously, since a lot of people who are starting out probably don't have an F1.4 lens, I'm going to be restricting myself to using F4 only to make things fair. So just got some photos with the A63, time to get some photos with the phone now. So somehow I have managed to lose the clip that I know that I recorded of me talking about the potential downsides or upsides of shooting with a phone. So I'm going to talk about that now. So phones are great because you always have them with you. You know, we carry our phones everywhere nowadays and the cameras are actually not that bad, I have to say. If you got a modern day flagship phone or maybe one from two or three generations ago, it's still a really, really good camera. But you've got to keep in mind that the sensor is tiny compared to what you would find in a full frame or APS-C camera. Actually, give me a second. And so you can see that obviously the sensor is going to be just a bit bigger than each of the camera's lenses or the phone's lenses. And you can see here that you've got this whole sensor, which is pretty much all three of these combined and a bit extra. So what that means is less light comes into the sensor, low light performance, really not that good. So ideally you want to shoot in the daytime, you wanna shoot somewhere that's very well lit. If you're shooting at night, you're going to 100% need a tripod. Phones are also great because if you have something that's a little bit modern and a little bit more expensive, you have three cameras typically. You have an ultra wide, a kind of normal 50 millimeter equivalent, and then you have a semi telephoto lens. So there you already have three different focal lengths that you can shoot at, and that's it. So let's get back to taking some photos. So we seem to have attracted some unsolicited visitors and uh, they're quite noisy. So we're going to move over to a different location and hopefully uh, not be interrupted consistently by these guys. But let's quickly talk about something that I think needs to be kind of said more often. A lot of people like to say that gear doesn't matter and it doesn't. I mean, gear doesn't prohibit you from going out and having fun and shooting and, you know, honing your craft. But I will say one thing is for certain. Better gear is definitely better. It makes life a lot easier. A great example of this is on newer, more expensive cameras. You get a lot more dynamic range. Autofocus is better. You have larger megapixel sensors, so you can get even bigger resolutions, more cropping. It's better for printing. So obviously there are a lot of upsides to newer and better camera gear. The same thing applies to lenses. So you gotta keep that in mind. I'm not gonna lie to you and say your 20 year old camera is going to be super easy. You're just gonna run out and get amazing shots right away. You can, you will definitely, but you've gotta put in a lot more effort and you gotta be a little bit more careful. For example, when you're shooting with phones, now is actually a really ideal time, but if you're shooting when it's really dark, it's going to be very hard because the sensor on this phone is really, really tiny. So you're gonna get a lot of noise. You also don't really have 
any bokeh on a phone. I mean, you can have the artificial bokeh, but that doesn't really look that good in my opinion. It's getting better, and maybe one day, who knows, it might be so good that we can't even tell the difference. But for the time being, you really gotta understand and play to the strengths and weaknesses of each system or whatever camera or whatever equipment you're using. We've got a lovely view in the back, so it'd be a shame for me not to take some more photos. So let's take some more photos. I'm just going to explain what's going through my head and why I chose to take the photos from the angles and compositions that I did. In this shot, we have the nice bush in the foreground. Then we have the car in the middle with the road. Then we have the two mountains in the background. So we've got a lot of depth to the image and that helps create a more engaging photo. Here I'm just repositioning myself to get a different angle. I want to get a side on. So you get this nice composition where you have the car in the foreground with the road. You can see a bit of this lake or reservoir in the background and then you have the mountains in the far distance. Once again, adding a lot of layers of depth while still giving a little bit of context to where you are. And notice the amount of negative space I give the image. You always want to give your subjects room to breathe. A great habit to have is also taking photos in both landscape and vertical. That way you have your stuff for social media and then you have the landscape version in case you want it. So this composition is pretty similar to the first photo that I took, except I raised my height of the camera. And so you get a little bit more context what's around the reservoir compared to the earlier shots where you get more of the mountain in the background. Yeah, I know, it's so nice. I'm now taking some photos from behind the car and I have to say I yeah, really like trips. this angle. I feel that when I take a photo of a nice oh, scenic a nice view shot. with the back of the subject facing the camera, it's almost like we are looking at the view from the subject's perspective compared to when you're taking the front of the subject, then it feels like you are someone else looking at the subject at the location. Now I'm using the phone and I have to say that I pretty much copy the same thing. compositions and angles because they are really um, good. <laughs> They're not necessarily super different to the other photos that I took the ACC 300, but it's it gives you but it gives you a good sight but it gives you a good real but it gives you a good real life scenario of a side by side comparison between a camera and a smartphone. So for this shot, I actually changed over to the ultra wide angle because I really wanted to get that road, the mountains, the reservoir and the background and everything together. And I have to say it actually looks quite good. I really like the landscape orientation. For these shots, I just want to add a little bit more depth to the photo by trying to use some foreground subjects or objects, whatever you want to call them. And as you can see with the smartphone, there is barely any bokeh. I have to say, I actually really enjoyed using the phone. I was a little bit surprised. I didn't think I would enjoy myself that much, especially since it's very limiting compared to my Sony a7 IV and the glass I use with it. So I have to say it was actually really fun and I'm kind of surprised that I enjoyed myself so much, but that is definitely a good thing because if you're having fun, that means you're going to want to do it more. I'll throw up some of my favorite photos with the a6300 on screen for you guys now. And I have to say that from a first glance, or if you were to just post this on Instagram without any information most people probably wouldn't be able to tell the difference between a full frame a74 photo or a a6300 photo i was using the sigma 35 art f1.4 so a very sharp lens and very high image quality lens so obviously that did help the a6300 a little bit because of the compression when you post images online a lot of the times most people aren't really going to be able to tell the difference but that's not going to stop you from getting great compositions and great framing and telling a story with your image so don't worry too much about that it's really more important to focus on making an emotional image and telling a story through the image now let's talk about the phone photos i actually did not edit these photos at all i'll throw up some of my favorites right now and I have to say that I kind of prefer it this way I don't want to kind of play with the colors too much because a lot of people aren't probably going to edit your photos like crazy some people probably just want to take some nice better looking photos and maybe this will be the motivation or hopefully this will be the motivation that you guys need to kind of consider trying out and really trying to utilize your phone camera or cameras to their maximum potential and the general message or point that I want to make is that you don't necessarily have to buy amazing camera gear before you can go out and shoot. Of course, like I mentioned earlier, better gear is better. 
Um, it's going to make your life a lot easier. And of course, you know, who doesn't like new shiny toys that do amazing things. But the main takeaway that I want to say is use what you have because it's better to do stuff, go out and shoot rather than wait and save up for some gear and, you know, give yourself excuses why you should not go out and take photos instead of actually going out and taking photos, enjoying yourself and becoming better as a photographer. If you want more content like this and be sure to subscribe and check out my presets link in the description.